hands in the house of God. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus, God. All power and all authority dwells in your name, God. All you set up under heaven and earth, God, you rule and reign, God. God, I ask that the Holy Ghost, God, speak through me tonight, God. I ask for the words, God, to speak. I'm an ambassador, God, but I'm a servant, God. A servant to the Almighty God. I'm a sinner, God, saved by grace. God, I pray in the name of Jesus for your anointing, God. Pray for the Holy Ghost, God, to give me words, God, that you just use me, God. Lord, to minister to your people, God. I pray, Father, for somebody in the house, my, maybe tonight, that doesn't know you, Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit minister to their heart and life, God. God, I pray you open the floodgates, God. Speak to your people, God, for we give you all the praise and honors in Jesus' wonderful name. And the whole church say it. Amen. Hallelujah. Continuing our Bible study in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 11.1. 1. We'll be kind of wrapping up the book of Hebrews tonight. The last question. So let's read through our chapter as we normally do. And then I'll dive right into those last questions. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the words, worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen, which are not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and through it being dead still speaks by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him for before he was taken he had his testimony that he pleased God but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him by faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen moved with godly fear prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to the place which he had received as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelled in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which had his foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. She bore a child when she passed the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, one man and him as good as dead were born, as many as the stars of the sky and the multitudes, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that seek a homeland. And truly, if they have called to mind the country for which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered Isaac. And he, excuse me, and he who offered, received the promises, offered up his only begotten son of whom it is said, In Isaac shall your seed be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he has also received him a figurative sense. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph in worship, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he was, became of age and refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he has endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, so were drowned. 
By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say, for the time would fall to me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who walked through faith, subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the, the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness who were made strong, became diligent in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. So others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned and they were sawn in two and they were tempted and were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins and being destitute, afflicted and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Can you say amen to the reading of God's Word? In verse question 9, it says, Explain the meeting of 29 to 31. Let's look at 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so, so were drowned. You know, when I read chapter 11, oftentimes I get a little overwhelmed because I read about these great men and women of faith, and oftentimes... I don't feel I meet the bar. Am I, am I alone when I say that? But you know, when I, when I really begin to study the background of the people, it helps me to understand, you know what? Maybe I'm not so much different than they are. You know, Moses, it says in Exodus 14, 16, he says he raised his staff and stretched forth his hand. So I'm going to give you some things. You can write these down if you want. Like I said, it depends on who you are. But faith demands action. That's one of the nuggets. Like I said, I'm going to say these quite frequently in the Bible study tonight. Faith demands action. It takes something on my part to do when it is connected with my faith. Moses, being a man that we know had a stuttering problem. These were some of his weaknesses. He was the man we call the man of a thousand excuses. The man that made an excuse for everything. You fall under either one of those categories. Well, guess what? You can relate to Moses. Moses was willing to go out of his way. Moses was willing to be chosen by God, but he wanted not to take that destination he didn't want to choose that life but God had chosen it for him it says right there that um, it also says that they were drowned when it talks about the Egyptian drowns mean to swallow up or engulfed God wiped out his enemies all those that tried to stand against him for most of his life all of a sudden God had taken out every enemy I mean you can, let's get a little realistic here you're standing there at the Red Sea all of a sudden you see a 200 foot wave on the left side, a 200-foot wave on the right side, and all of a sudden you got to walk right down the middle of it. Talking about anxiety, talking about wondering, Lord, have mercy, what in the world is going on? Walking on dry land to the other side, trying to get to the other side. Faith demanded action. I wrote this down in my notes. He had the Egyptians behind him. He had the desert underneath him. He had the Red Sea in front of him, but guess what? He had God over him the whole time. The whole time that Moses was trying to do the, the whole time the man couldn't even talk correctly, the whole time that he made a thousand excuses, he still took the action. See, that's the thing is about faith. Debate. Faith demands something on our part. We must be willing to step out in faith. Remember what I told you? I said in layman's terms, faith will never normally make sense. I can give you the, bib the biblical terminology and the, the seminary terminology and all those things, but faith oftentimes never makes sense but it demands action on my part because without faith it is impossible to please him so Moses went through a lot in his life but Moses was still willing to to take the action to take the next step it says in verse 30 by faith the walls of Jericho fell down for after they were encircled for seven days so let, let, let's just unpack that a little bit is that Seven days, these massive walls that are built up around us, and the, and you got to walk around them. So you're you're with Joshua, you're with the people of Israel, and you, the Holy Spirit tells you to walk around these walls. I wrote this down on my notes. Is that you can write this down and as well? Is that fun, sometimes faith demands to be quiet? Because let's get a little realistic. I, I'm a literal thinker. That's the way my mind works. 
Walk around these walls seven times and then they'll come down. You'll begin to shout at the end. Why, why demand silence? Because the whole time you're walking around these walls, let's, let's get a little realistic here. What are we doing? Why are we wasting our time doing this? This does not make any sense. We've got to just circle this wall seven times. Just be quiet. That's what the Holy Ghost tells me sometimes, and sometimes I don't listen. Sometimes I want to understand everything with the rational mind of thought, but I've got to be quiet because God says, I'm going to bring down the walls. I'm going to bring them down. That's my job to bring them down. Some say that according to scholars that the walls were so thick that chariots could ride through these walls. So you imagine the size and the magnitude of something so big. Joshua was a, a, a great man, a great leader, but watch this. Even if you look at the book of Joshua, it says in multi, three different times in the book of Joshua in the first chapter, be strong and be courageous. It says it at least three times in the first chapter. Well, according to the Hebrew language, a lot of times when you study Hebrew, when something is repeated, it's trying to emphasize something or a struggle in somebody's life. Did, did, did Joshua struggle with the faith to step into the leadership? I don't know. Maybe. But at the same time, it says Moses is dead. And now all of a sudden, Joshua's got to come in, and Joshua takes on an insurmountable task. So watch, faith sometimes demands courage. De demands courage on my part to be able to step up and take that leap of faith over every area of my life. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Faith that overcomes my enemies. I sometimes have to be quiet and know that even though that God may have chosen me for the task, oftentimes I can speak doubt into a situation and don't even realize it. Anybody messed up things with their tongue before? Lord have mercy. Joshua was a great man. Remember that even in the book of Joshua 24, 15, choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will be people of faith. We speak faith, we live faith, and every area of my life, every area of our lives, we want to live for God. Notice that, Lord have mercy, the multiple times just the word faith is mentioned in this chapter. And it walks us through all the people that goes through. Well, let me go a little deeper with you. I always try to share a little Hebrew nuggets for you. In ancient Judaism, faith was persistence. Persistence. That's the way the ancient Jews would look at faith. Watch. Persistence, a firm or continuous stance in a course of action in spite of the difficulty or opposition. You continue to move forward even though you have no answers. I think we all like the answers. We want to know the end before the beginning. I don't want to sign up if you can't tell me what's going on, God. I, don't, I want to know the, the destiny. I want to know where I'm headed. I realized that about ministry a long time ago when I signed up and I kept, accepted the call of God. God says, you don't determine where you go, I do. Somebody said, it's like ministry in the military. You never know where you're going to be sent to. So it was persistence to them. It was just a, a continual moving forward, a continual persistence, willing to press through, willing to go through like Moses and now Joshua, willing to, to walk around the walls, willing to do these things, willing to take the necessary steps, even when the world thinks we're crazy. Because the world mocks our faith. They don't understand our message behind our faith. They never will. Say, I live by faith. What does that mean? That believe that God gave His Son, His only begotten Son for my life. Amen? That He came and lived a sinless life was perfect and had no blemishes, went to the Roman cross and died for my sins, rose again on the third day. If I put my faith, faith and trust in Him, I can have the hope of eternal life. Every fiber of my being, the world is not supposed to understand your faith. Sometimes even church folk don't even understand your faith. But it's persistence, it's continual pressing to going forward. One person find, defined faith as confident belief in the truth. The truth, the Word of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So truth comes from Scripture. So it's our belief in the Word of God and what it means over our life. Because watch, it's our driving force. It drives every area of our life and how we live out our faith. Sometimes I just want the faith to believe telemarketers to stop calling me. 
Lord have mercy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I think I got four or five of them today. Me and Pastor Jeff was checking our phones. It was going back and forth. He'd get three or four of them. I got three or four of them. I said, Lord have mercy. Stop calling me. Blowing my phone up from the Social Security Administration or something like that. I don't owe anybody money. Not that I'm aware of. I'm trying to pay him back if I do. Faith is powerful. Faith is monumental. Faith defines, faith can shape every area of our life, but it never will make sense in our life. Hallelujah. Well, the one that always got me the most is that if, if you love Jesus, you'll send, this peop, you'll send this to 450 people in 10 minutes. And if you don't, you're an infidel and a blasphemer. I said, man, let, at least let me get off work first or something like that. Amen. But let's watch this. Let's go on. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. The harlot Rahab. Well, somebody said, well, I may not measure up, but guess what Rahab was? She was a prostitute. She didn't have a good reputation. But she was willing to step out in faith and believe because she had heard the stories. Trust me. She had heard of everything that was going on with the children of Israel, and she was willing to step out on faith, even though her reputation had preceded her. She said, I'm willing to follow the people of God and to become with the people of God. And guess what? She became in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By faith. That's the reason why this woman is named in here, right in the middle of that. Somebody said, well, I don't qualify. Well, guess what? The Lord put Rahab right there in the middle to remind us that he don't qualify, excuse me, he qualifies the called, amen. He's the one that places it in our life. She was willing to take the step of faith. He says in Joshua 2, 9, he says, I know the Lord has given you the land. She knew, she knew something inside of her, something inside of it spoke faith. See, faith must come right from the mouth. You have to say it sometimes. It's got to come from you. You have to say, I believe the word of God. I know it is the Word of God. There is nothing that can change the Word of God. I believe Jesus Christ has changed my life by faith. So watch this. Faith is also trust. It's trust. Her old life did not define her new life because she ended up being in the lineage of Jesus. She said, I'm no longer defined by this. So don't tell me where you come from. And I'll tell you where you're going if you put your faith in Christ. I told you before is that some people come to me all the time and say, I remember what you did. Then you know what I've been forgiven for. Because of faith. Hallelujah. Because I don't put my faith in myself anymore. I put my faith in God for salvation. So when they begin to define you, they said, you know what? You're talking that faith stuff. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Because it's not in me. See, when I was a sinner, when I was lost, when I lived for myself, my faith was in my destiny and everything. But then I know when I got saved and I made things right with God, my faith was in Him, that He would lead my life. It says in that last verse, excuse me, in the last verse, spies with peace. Faith is not always the absence of fear, but to stand in the face of it. You're willing to press through. You're willing to stand faith or fear face to face. But I have not given you that spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. Watch this. Fear has its own spirit then. Because I don't want to live by fear. I want to live by faith. Well, let me give you a little acronyms. Fear, false expectations appearing real. Anybody ever got your anxiety all up, everything, you're all, you got a headache going on, you can't sleep, then you realize everything is going to be all right. Am I the only one that's been there? Got all stressed out, got all worked up, everything, worried about that meeting, that conference, worried about being laid off, something going on. Then you get up there and everything's fine. I, I, I thought we was going to have a stressful meeting. I, I thought this was going to be the worst day. I, I thought all this was going to happen. That's fear that is driving my life when I live by it like that. False expectations appearing real. Let me give you a little acronym for faith. Full assurance in the heart. You ever notice the heart has to play catch up to the mind? Because the mind tries to rationalize everything. We try to have understanding for every time, even though the heart wants to believe. See, that's faith. That's faith that revolutionizes us. Watch, because it begins in here. 
Romans 12, 3 says there's a measure of faith. So now we see that if we live by faith, oftentimes there's a measure in it. But the great thing about it, it's so powerful, and I'm going to kind of walk through this. I'm jumping a little ahead of myself, but the Bible says faith is a grain of a mustard seed. I've got mustard seeds right here from Israel. Several thousands in here. It's not the smallest seed, as some people have tried to say, but at their time, in 2,000 years ago, this was the smallest seed of their time, not in our time, because there's other seeds that are actually smaller. But just start with something so small, something so little, God, just... If I took one of these things out, you wouldn't be able to even see it from where you're sitting. But I've got a bunch of them together, and you can see the bag. Why? Because faith united. Hallelujah. If one can put a 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. That's God's multiplication table. Hallelujah. It's not my multiplication table. God didn't take math. Hallelujah. He said, I got my own math. He said, because once you step into faith, all of a sudden, faith owns, takes supernatural meaning. But guess what? When we combine it together, faith to believe that we can see Lexington County get saved. And we can believe for greater things to happen. So watch. I don't want to try to get it too ahead. Maybe I'll come back to that. But watch. What does Hebrews 11 one say? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith, watch this. Not what will be faith. Now faith. You ever had need some now faith? You get the phone call, you need some now faith. The text goes off, you need some now faith. You got to run to the ER, you need some now faith. You got the doctor's report, you need some now faith. Not what will be faith. Watch this, substance is a Latin term. Evidence is a legal term. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, man. Watch this. So faith is a perspective as well. Oh, Lord. Conviction. Watch this. So watch. If, 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 if substance is the foundation, then evidence is the conviction. I live by the conviction in my life that I can live by faith because watch, I can operate in it right now. I live by that deep conviction, substance and evidence. I've got the evidence. I can look back over my life. I can look back over 10, 15, 30 years ago how God spared me through every area of my life so I can now live by faith. You know me as a preacher in 2019, but guess what? I came from that broken home. I came from that chaos and that drug and, oh, Lord, have mercy, all the mess I saw growing up. I came from that stuff. So to see where God has brought me now, I've got the evidence. Hallelujah. I've been there and done that and got the T-shirt, as some people have said. But now I live by faith. Why? Because it's the conviction in my heart. I've seen God deliver me from too much. He's come for me too far. You can say that as well. You can say that if faith is perspective, I've got the perspective because I live by the conviction. This is not a definition of faith, but watch this. This is a description. In Greek, it's the assurance or the assurance of things hoped for. I know ahead of time that God is going to be there. Some people come to me a lot and they say, and it's a difficult situation. I had the faith to believe that somebody would be healed and they passed away. We struggle with that a lot. That's normal. I watched my grandmother. I remember praying for her for Alzheimer's and she passed away. She got healed, but she got healed on the other side. Come on now. That's the thing I tell people all the time. Say they did get healed if they're a believer in Jesus Christ. She got a new body. I remember I told this story before. I remember when she was getting up in age and she we had to spoon feed her because she could not even eat on her own she had the mind they say of a two-year-old so we was spoon feeding her and she would lay up in that bed and she would reach her hands towards that cross and just kind of shake her hands waving at that little cross hanging over right at the foot of the bed and I remember the nurse would come in there the hospice nurse would come in there and she said it's okay sir she don't know what she's doing I said oh yes ma'am she does I said she's ready to go home ma'am I said she's got her bags packed she's got faith to know that God is there hallelujah the soul hadn't left the body yet, but guess what? When she passed away, she got her healing, amen? Hallelujah, because I can have the assurance to know, guess what? We're going to see her again, and I'm going to see your loved ones again, hallelujah. For we walk by faith and not by sight. You walk, you don't run. Faith, oftentimes, it tells us to slow down. I want to get in a hurry. 
I've got some ADD going on sometimes, church. Mama used to call it BAD. Anybody catch that? Bad. Yeah, not ADD, just bad. You know, we didn't have all those stuff when I was growing up. Remember? <laughs> I got to walk by faith. I got to slow down. I got to pace myself. I'm not in a hurry. Guess what? The only time your Bible tells you to run is when it says to get away from sin. The rest of the time, when you're going for Christ, it says to walk. It's easy, to, like I said, to want to get ahead, to get to the finish line. But God says, little by little in the book of Deuteronomy, God says, I've got to slowly walk you through some things. You've got to trust me. The thing is, do you trust him? Do you have faith in him today? Because we know, like I said in verse 6, but faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to him must believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seeks him. James tells us the testing of our faith produces endurance. The best way to tell you have faith in God is to have the faith tested. It's the only way. The only way you can prove to me you love God is to have the love tested. That's simple terminology, but a lot of people don't grasp it. I can tell you I love Jesus. I can tell you I have faith in God until the faith is tested. Oh, I want to be like Job. Everything that Job went through, he said, though he slay me, Though he take my life, though he, he, he pass me on to the other side, i got to have faith in the living God. Naked I came into the womb and naked I came out. Just everything has belonged to the hands of God. See, faith has to be tested sometimes. Faith is to believe what you do not see, and the reward of the faith is to see what you believe. And Augustine said that. That was powerful. Well, let me look at your Bibles. I want to show you a little something. Is that look at verse 3? It says, through faith. Walking through faith. You got now faith when you get the phone call, but then sometimes there's through faith because through faith sometimes is a year's, decades process. Did you catch that? Through faith. I've got to be through faith. Verse 4, by faith. Verse 5, by faith. By faith you can define who I am because of my faith in Christ. Verse 6 says, but without faith. These little nuggets I'm trying to show you is that it touches every area of our life. Verse 11 says, through faith. But verse 13 says, they died in the faith. They still had hope. Even though they passed, they still had faith in the living God. See, God touches every area of our life when He walks through the book of the Hebrews. Verse 33, who through faith. See, it touches everything. Okay, so we have through faith, not just I made it faith. By faith, not left alone faith. But without faith, not faith in other things. Those who died in the faith, not, excuse me, not they didn't make it faith. Who through faith, not lost in the faith. Faith is everything in our life. And how we motivate and how we live. So Jesus said unto him, because you have the unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say to the mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you God is saying just start with something little just something small like I said if I took one of the mustard seeds out and showed it to you and put it on your finger you would barely be able to see it if you're like me you gotta focus cause listen I got past 40 my eyes just started messing up on me even after context I was like I sat here reading my bible boy I was like I gotta get larger print man lord have mercy my eyes are Focus. But the Bible, he's basically telling us, just start with what you got. Somebody said, preacher, I, I don't know if I have anything. I don't, I, don't, I don't have much. I've been through so much in my life, I can barely hold my head up some days. He said, just start with what you got. Start what little you can give me. Start with where you are, because if you start with something small, I can make it big. What Remember the, the widow's mite? When she put just a little bit in there, and God says, he, he, she gave more than the rest of them. She didn't have much, but she was willing to throw in a little bit. God says, just give me what little you got. And guess what? We'll build from there. Hallelujah. I've met great men and women of faith. I, I've met many of them over the years. Some of them have mentored me. And when, when they had nothing, hallelujah, when they, uh, 
worked hard and, and everything. I, I remember being raised by this type of people and being around them. They had nothing, but guess what? They worked hard and they said, we're going to believe God. We're going to trust God. We're going to have our faith in God because guess what? They started out with something little. I remember the stories of my grandparents and the great-grandparents and how that they didn't have no, nobody to call on outside of the church. There was none of that stuff. There was none of those things, according to what they told me. But they was willing to press through in faith. And I build my back on the ministry that God has given me on their back. Because I saw their faith. And that's powerful because that's where we can look back and we say, you know what? We can still have the faith in God because of what He's done. I like to go to the gym. I like to work out. I work out hard. I remember about a couple years ago, I probably lost, I don't know, 35 pounds. Some people say, but preacher, you skinny. Well, I was a big, I was for my height, I was close to about 200 pounds. And, you know, I'm, I'm short, so, and I went in there, I'd work out and I'd train and finally got myself under control being work out. And, and then I, I slack up some. Sometimes I, I, go, I go work out real hard, then I go home and eat banana pudding and ice cream. Hallelujah. I got the faith to believe it'll still stay off. Amen. I realize sometimes I got to give and take a little bit there sometimes. But guess what? I try to work hard. I try to believe in the faith in certain things. Let's look, look at question 10. A, a significance of verse 32. Let's flip there real quick. And what shall we say for the time would fall to tell me of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Japheth, of David, of Samuel, and also of the prophets. He said, what more shall I say? Almost like saying, all the people I've listed, what else do you need? He said, I've listed all these great names, all these great people, but what more or so do you do you need? Yeah, you ever had somebody, they've had all the evidence for everything, and they still say, I need more. I, I've... I still need to. I still need to know more. It's it's all right there in front of you. You you. He he's saying I've already read off all the list of names I've told you about Abraham, about Noah, about Isaac, about Jacob, about Joseph, about Moses. What else do you need? What more shall I say? Let me list these other guys as well. Gideon, Barak, Samson. They had their issues as well. Samson had an issue with women. Struggles with lust. But guess what? His name's in the hall of faith. I could go on. I could talk about David. He committed murder. He committed adultery. But his name is right here. And the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart. He's listed in the hall of faith. Right here. You know the reason why verse 41 it mentioned? Because I believe that's going to be our name one day. We're going to be able to stand before God. When we go before our Creator, we're going to be look back and we're going to be able to see by faith how we made it through every trial. I remember one time when years ago when I sat down in front of my boss and they said, we're going to have to lay you off. When the recession hit. And I remember going up to the unemployment office and hardest time of my life. Thought I was going to lose my house, everything. I went in there and I filled out paperwork, man, I was looking for work. And I didn't realize how much I needed to work until you get laid off. I didn't realize it. I was like, I just, I was accustomed. That's the way I was taught growing up. You work. Whatever that may be, you work. You work. Whether if it's cutting grass, whether if it's working in an office, doesn't matter. You work. So when I got laid off, all of a sudden I went from, I went up, I'd get up about, I finally got a job at Target loading trucks, so I'd go there. I'd load trucks about 3, 4 in the morning, do that for 4 or 5 hours. I'd go home, and I'd sleep for a few hours. Then I'd go deliver pizzas at night. I'd do that for 3 or 4 hours in between until I could even find a job. Because, listen, when you need money, you'll work anywhere. But I've seen God faithful through everything in my life. I could tell you story after story after story of the faithfulness of God so many times, how He's been there for me, how He helped me through every trial of my life. But I had to live by faith. But I had to realize it wasn't so much about the house getting to the other side. All those things that I preached about, about getting to the other side, it was about God says, I want the faith to get you to the other side. 
I want the faith to transform you. Look at verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. Subdued kingdoms. I've overcome so much. I, 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 I've, they prayed that their adversaries would be defeated so they could walk in. And God handed it to them, worked righteousness. They lived it out in front of them, obtained promises. Did you know there's thousands of promises in this Bible? Thousands of them. And I'm just wondering if somebody in the house of God can claim it over their life and believe for faith for it. I told them in the new members class, is that it's amazing how when you go through something in your life, a scripture takes on a new meaning. When I was laid off, and I began to read that scripture, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Well, supply in the Greek means to cram it full. I'm like, God, cram it full right now because I need it because I'm broke. And God made a way every single time in my life through every trial and tribulations. They stopped the mouth of lions. All the enemies, all the adversaries would kind of rise up and try to stop them. So watch, faith is associated with trials. You can't get away from it. Faith is associated with the trials of your life. You look at these names and everything that God is listing right here, and you see that God has been faithful through all these men's lives. What does James 2.20 said? Faith without works is dead. So in essence, it's a false faith. We are not saved by good works, but watch, but for good works. That's how I know because something inside of me demands I've got to do some action. Something inside of me demands I've got to step up. Why? Because the just shall live by faith, according to Habakkuk. Well, what's the just? Those that have been forgiven. Those that have been redeemed. Those that have been sanctified. Something in your life should move towards faith and believe God. To make that initial step, to step out of the box, to step out of the comfort zone, because faith without works is dead. Something in my life, I must be willing to take the steps. I must be willing to make the change in my life. I, I've got to, to, to not stay where I am at because it's easy to stay where we are, to stay in the comfort zone. I'm willing to go. I'm willing to step out of the box. God says, I've knocked down kingdoms, all these things, all these people, the mouths of lions. You could talk about Daniel and so many others where God has delivered them and set them free. But God knows exactly what we need, but we got to go through with faith. What better thing for us has God provided, and what does it mean for us today? Question 11. Verse 39. Let's skip down there. I want to come back. I'm going to jump back a little bit. But in all these things, having obtained a good report through faith, being received, not the promise. God, having provided something better for us that He made with us, excuse me, excuse me, that they without us should not be made perfect faith is often based sometimes on experience because you've been there you've done that you've seen the faithfulness of God watch this so faith triumphs over every area of our life faith triumphs over death as well over the victory because we have the victory in the faith I mean let me skip back to verse 34 quench the violence of fire escape the edge of the sword out of the weakness were made strong waxed violent and fire turned to fight all the armies of the aliens women received their dead raised to life again others were tortured not accepting the deliverance but they might obtain a better resurrection they had a promise because they though there was victory over death in the grave they had the faith in it to believe because of the experience they know their loved ones were with God as I said before we can put our faith and trust in God I think about on a day like today as I think about the past and I remember I was working the night shift at the manufacturing plant I probably got off I don't know two three in the morning something like that I can't remember Courtney was working at the office she called me that morning she said you need to get up turn on the television and I turned it on and I saw the planes crash into the buildings 18 years ago I remember that I was glued to that TV for hours I thought we were under attack I began to watch that and I began to pray I was like God what in the world is going on I realized more and more even to this day that there's evil in this world there is there's evil in this world 
There's no way around that. People try to deny it. They try to say, you know what, none of that stuff even matters. But guess what? I have the faith to believe that one day he's going to make it all right. There'll be no more terrorists, no more diseases, no more chaos, no more confusion, no more depression, no more anxiety, no more Alzheimer's, no more none of that stuff. Hallelujah. Because I have the faith to believe because I remember that day. I remember how it shocked me. I remember how it changed our nation. I remember that very vividly as I woke even up this morning. As I think about that. I'm like, God, this stuff is real. And I want the faith to believe that I know what that evil will be cast down in the name of Jesus. Do I understand why somebody has to face some of these trials and tribulations in your life? No, I don't always understand that. I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you an answer, but guess what? If you live by faith, one day you'll understand. Maybe not on this side, hallelujah, but maybe on the other side, amen? Maybe it'll take the getting to the other side to where God says, I'll give you the full scope of the picture. I heard a guy once say, he said to me one time, he said, he said, when I get to heaven, he said, I've got all these questions I'm going to ask God. I said, no, you won't. He said, what do you mean? I said, you're going to be on streets of gold, crystal sea, something so beautiful and so majestic and so powerful, and you think you're worried about some time down here on earth? No, I don't think so. Because guess what? Then it'll all make sense. Then it'll all say, you know what? I made it. Hallelujah. I made it to the other side. I fought all these things. I fought that old devil that tried to take me down and tried to destroy my life. But I had faith in the Son of God that He would redeem me, that He would save me, that I know I have the hope of heaven one day. Amen. I know that I can have my faith and trust in Jesus Christ because I know that I know that I know that God saved me. Why? By faith. Because faith never makes sense to the rational mind but it does in the heart. So I'm just wondering today, say, you know what? Preacher, I do need faith. I need faith to know that I can make it through these things because I, I want the faith to press through. I, I want to be like some of these. I want, to, I, I, I want to know that my name can be listed here on this type of thing. But I've got to step out in faith. I think about Abraham what it must have been like to have been up in age to say, you know what? I'm going to give you a son. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pass him down to you. I, I've got Ishmael. I, I've got my other son. I, I've got this one. No, no, no. He's not the boy that I promised to you. He's not the promise I've got coming. Well, I'm too old, God. As Sarah began to laugh as well. I think about Noah. You imagine how, how God began to speak to him by faith and had to trust God. Some scholars say they don't believe it rained even back then. And all of a sudden, now you got to build an ark. you got to build this massive ark. And you got to call all, the, all these animals are going to come. And, and everybody's going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. That's some crazy faith right there. But he's got to be willing to step out. Noah was a great man. He was willing to say, you know what? I'm willing to do that. Abel, Enoch, others, Isaac. Jacob, Jacob was known also as a deceiver. Joseph, the dreamer, Joseph was willing to dream. He was willing to know that he, he expressed his faith to, to, to the dreams and the visions that he had showed to his brothers, and they still cast him out. Faith is not always popular. It is not always at the top of everybody's list, because oftentimes if somebody struggles with faith, they're going to try to discourage yours. They're going to try to beat your faith down. Because maybe they're wrestling with theirs. Maybe they're having a hard time with their faith because they're going through some trials and tribulations of their life. Anybody ever felt like Joseph before? Maybe the ones you love, maybe the ones you know the best, they beat your faith completely down to nothing. You don't have anything left. Moses' parents, Lord have mercy. We talk about Moses, talk about the parents of Moses having to trust to put their baby out there their, 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 their small child out there on the river to say, you know what, I, I'm willing to give everything. I'm willing to give my son as an act of faith. I remember years ago that we were told that we couldn't have kids. We got married and we went to countless doctors and specialists and all these things. And, and the doctor said, nope. I said, y'all aren't meant to have kids. 
And we was talking about fostering and because that's the type of background I came from. I was raised in and started out in a foster home. I said, what? I didn't think much about it. I said, well, if that's, that's what it's meant to be, I said, we can always adopt. We can always foster. And I've told this story to the new members, and I think I've shared it with some of you, is that I said, well, how many of you know when you do stuff like that, your emotions get all worked up and everything, and you expect, you know, and you just it, it, it's hard on you, it's rough on you, because you believe in God for a family. We would come in. Some of the, the young couples in the church were having babies, and some girls that didn't even want kids were having babies. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And that was a hard time on us because we wanted children. We wanted to raise them in a loving, godly home. And other people were having babies. They didn't even want us. We began to question. Our faith was being rocked to the core. And then I remember one of the ladies that we hadn't talked to in a long time I shared this story with the new members. And she um, said she was putting on her makeup. And she said as she was putting it on, the Holy Ghost spoke to her. I'm Pentecostal. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. You don't believe in that? I'll take you back to the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. She said the Holy Ghost spoke to her right in the middle of putting on her makeup. She said, Mike and Courtney are pregnant. They're, God gave them their desires of their heart. She's pregnant right now. Well, she didn't know that we had taken a test. She didn't know. She had no clue. Because we had taken it that Friday. And it first came back positive. And as I began to look at that, I said, Courtney, you know, I, I don't know now. I was like, you had taken so many in the past, you thought it was a false positive or something, you know. And it came up positive. Well, she, she was so excited and so exuberant. She's like, we got to tell everybody like that. She said she was just so excited and everything. And I remember she called the girl up. She said, hey, we're pregnant. We're going to have a baby. She said, I already know. She said, what do you mean you already know? She said, call my mother. She said, I called her the other day and told her you were pregnant. She said, what? She said, yeah. My first thought was, God, you could have told me first. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then a couple years later, Hallie came along. So I'm telling you from a perspective is that it hits me as well. I told you I'm not exempt from believing God in faith. I'm not exempt from none of those things. They, they, they hit this preacher as well. I, I, I've got to trust God a lot of times. I, I, I told you the story, and I began, I'm, I'm about to wrap up here in a little while. I told you the story of how I, I had to trust God through, through some difficult areas of my life as well. I'm pretty transparent. I, remember, I told you I had to trust God on the same day I got accepted into the seminary. It was the same day I found out my foster mom had passed away. So I had to trust God in faith of what he was doing. I, I'm like, God, I, I, what, are you, what are you doing, God? God says, just trust me. I felt the Holy Ghost speak that to my heart. Just trust me. Just trust me. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? And sometimes, I, I'm not going to lie to you, this preacher sometimes wanted to say no. God, I, I need some answers, God. I need some answers. I imagine with, even with, with the story of Joseph, he went through 13 years uh, uh, of going through all the mess that he went through. I, I would want to say deep down in his heart, he would have to wonder, God, what in the world is going on? Maybe I'm the only one that asks God questions, amen. Am I the only one? Maybe I'm the... I'm the one that says, God, what are you doing? I don't understand what's going on, but guess what? I, I want to live by faith, God, because I want to please you. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I, my faith is in God because why? Because I love God. Because Jesus Christ has changed my life. And I dedicated my life to Him. I said, God, I'm willing to go through the trials. I didn't sign up for them, but I will make it through by faith. And God showed me through everything, through all that. 
It's even in the midst I try to would have hope in my heart. I would try to take it to a level of expectation to believe God for faith. Can I give you an example? When a woman's nine months pregnant, which we've had many in here that have given birth, she has, she may hope for a child until she gets pregnant. But then when she hits nine months, it's expectation. Can I tell you, it's like, if the doctor said at nine months, just go back home, it'll be three or four months. That would be pretty bad, wouldn't it, ladies? She expects, she knows, she expects that something's about to happen. Why? Because of faith. She's already known that it's going to happen. It's only a matter of time. The hope clinged over in expectation and it stirred her faith. The same way we know, we, Ethan, he came a little early. He came about a month early. Holly was dead on time. But at the same time, it stirred our faith through the whole process because we were thanking God through all of it. I remember, like I said, after they was born, I went down to the chapel and right there at the hospital, and I cried out to God. I said, God, I know I made a lot of mistakes in my life. But thank you that you would have enough trust in me to give me a child. And I said, I promise you, I'll dedicate them back to you. I hold them for a season, but ultimately they're yours. They belong to you, God. So by faith, I said, God, they're yours. Like Hannah dedicated Samuel. I said, God, they're not mine. They belong to you. And by faith, I believe that they're going to shake the world for God. I don't know what God has planned for them the same way with your children. By faith, we're going to believe that God is going to transform their lives and minister to others. Amen. By faith. Hallelujah. Stand with me over the house as I begin to close. I just want to read this passage out of Revelation because the greatest thing, like I said, our faith is to overcome death over every area. The Revelation 21, Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself will be them, excuse me, will be with them, and they will be their God. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, for the former things have passed away. That's the greatest thing we have faith over, church, is in the resurrection and the power of his word. That we know, as the Bible says, we have those great cloud of witnesses watching over us by faith. I'm wondering today and tonight as I begin to close, say, you know what, preacher? I am wrestling with something in my faith. Something has drained me tonight. Something has taken a lot out of me. I have felt like Joseph. I was in that season. I was in those 13 years. I'm still in the midst of that. I feel wiped out. I feel drained, but I know that God is there. But sometimes the heavens feel like brass and I feel like I can't get through. I feel like my faith is nothing. I don't even feel like I have a mustard seed of of faith. Pray for me tonight. I want to pray for you tonight. That God can help you and give you strength. Because maybe you need a now faith. Maybe you need something right now just to even encourage your life. Maybe you need some of that now faith. I need some of that alive and awakening. I need God to use me in the midst of that. I want to pray for you tonight. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ tonight, God. I pray for somebody that's wrestling with their faith. I pray that the Holy Ghost minister to their life, God. Oh, Jesus, God, as we read these stories about these great men and women, God. Some of them didn't start out so great. They started out, some of them with literally nothing, with a bad reputation. 
a bad name, a tainted name in the neighborhood. But God says, I'm going to put them right here in the most famous chapter of faith, Hebrews 11. Oh, Jesus, God, I pray, Lord, for homes and families, God. Doctors' reports, surgeries, God, cancer, God. I speak against everything the enemy tries to doubt our faith, Lord. Job situations, finances, fear, God. Oh, Lord, the death of a loved one, God, whatever it may be, Lord. You'll wipe away every tear from our eyes, God. No more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. All the faith will make sense when we make it to heaven, God. I don't always understand why we have to go through these things in our life, Lord, but we trust you, God. We trust in your name, Lord. God, I pray today, God, for situations that are going on in people's lives, God. They're bigger than them, they're bigger than me, but they're not bigger than you, God. And I pray our faith rise up, Lord, to become everything it's called to be, Lord, to honor God and to please God. Father, I praise you tonight, Lord. I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It's in Jesus' wonderful name I pray and the whole church say it. Amen. God bless you guys as you go. And we'll see you again on Sunday morning.